friends welcome now we are going to start with the simplex table 1 to solve this linear programming problem and we are going to use bgm method to solve the given problem because there are two inequalities in the original problem with greater than or equal to sign in making or rather converting the inequality into equality we have to introduce two types of virtual variables we have to subtract surplus variable and we have to add artificial variable in all such inequalities having sign of greater than or equal now let us start with the initial solution or say first simplex table first we have to write c0 the coefficients are 40 in case of x1 24 for x2 0 for s1, 0 for s2 and positive m for a1 and a2. In case of greater than or equal to type of inequality, there will be no slack variable. So, in the initial solution, we have to take the artificial variables as solution variable. We cannot take surplus variables as solution variables because they are always negative in the equality. So now we have to start with artificial variables. In row 1 or R1, A1 will be the solution variable in the initial solution and in R2 it will be A2. See, it can never happen that artificial variable and slack variable are together in any equality. So don't think when they are together what should be the solution variable artificial variables will be alone in case of equality and it will be always with a surplus variable which is negative in case of greater than or equal to equality where there is less than or equal to inequality we can convert it by just adding slack variable and in that type of case slack variable can also come as solution variable but in a single constraint, there can never be slack variable as well as artificial variable together. So there will be, or rather there should be no confusion. Now, we have to write the coefficients from both the constraints. The first constraint will give us the first row of our initial table. 20x1, 50x2, minus 1s1 no s2 so coefficient 0 plus a1 so rather plus a1 so plus 1 into a1 no a2 so coefficient 0 4800 becomes the solution value the second row will be from the second constraint 80 x1 50 x2 no s1 so 0 minus s2 so minus 1 in case of s2 no a1 so 0 and a2 1 7200 now to get the zj values first we have to write the cj values of the solution variables here in the first column there are a1 and a2 so cj values will be m and m now we can write zj values m into 20 that is 20m plus m into 80 that is 80m 20m plus 80m will be 100m similarly m plus uh, m into 50 50m plus 50m 100m m into minus 1 minus m m into 0 0 minus m plus 0 minus m similarly minus m here here m into 1 m m into 0 0 m plus 0 m we are not going to write uh, ZJ values in the solution value column uh, because it will be somewhat complex having M in it. So we will write the ZJ value in the solution value column only when we arrive at the optimal solution. Otherwise we can write 12,000 M there. If we want to write there can be 12,000 M. 4,800 into M plus 7,200 into M. Now, delta j value, cj minus zj, cj 40 minus 100m, 40 minus 100m. See, we are not subtracting only 100, it is 100m 
100 mm together. Similarly, here it will be 24 minus 100 m. 0 minus minus m, so plus m, 0 minus minus m plus m, m minus m, 0, m minus m, 0. Now, first of all, we have to check after writing the ZJ values whether this is optimal solution or not. In this case, our objective is minimization. In case of minimization, to have the objective solution, all the delta J values should be 0 or positive. All the delta values should be 0 or positive. These four values are 0 or positive, but these two cannot be. Now to simplify these two, what should be the value of m? The value of m is the highest possible value. A very ambiguous meaning is there. The value of m or m takes the highest possible value. What do you mean by highest possible value? If we take the highest value in this table, say 12,000 or 7,200, m is even greater than these values. So m is so large, it can be taken up to infinite. Now this is 40 minus 100 m, this is 24 minus 100 m. If we say compare these two, how can we decide which one is the higher one or which one is the lower one? So here 100 m is subtracted from 40 and here 100 m is subtracted from 24. So logically this answer will be less than this one. And since the 100 m has negative sign, both will be negative. Just imagine m takes only 100 value. 40 minus only 1, m is 1. 100 into m means 100 into 1, 1. Uh, 100, here also 100, 40 minus 100, minus 60, 24 minus 100, minus 76. I explained this thing just for the purpose of simplification of this factor. But as a student, you can assume any value of m just to understand the matter. Never substitute any value for m anywhere in the simplex table. I suggest this step just for understanding and for the purpose of understanding, I want to simplify this one. Otherwise, many senior teachers can criticize me for this type of explanation. But I want to make this thing very simple and clear for the students that's why I am explaining the thing in a strange way. Otherwise, as a responsible teacher, I should not suggest to assume any value of m. But, just to simplify. So now we know that this is the lowest value, negative value rather, or highest value with negative sign, whatever the term you can use. But we have to select the lowest delta j value because the objective is minimization. Remember, when the objective is maximization, we have to select the highest delta value. Exactly opposite to it, when we have the objective of minimization, we have to select the lowest delta j value and lowest delta j value is always negative. Now, the same steps which we are using in simplex method this is the column of x2 has become key column. Now divide the solution values by the respective elements in the key column. 4800 divided by this 50. So it will be 96. And similarly 7200 will be divided by this 50. It will be 144. Again, minimum ratio because we are we have to select the minimum positive value that is 96. So R1 or row of A1 has become the key row. The common element of key column and key row becomes the key element. See, all the steps are same in case of simplex method and it's another variant known as big M method. This is simplex method. But specially it is known as big M method because of these capital M, the coefficients of the artificial variable. That's why this variant of simplex method is known as big M method. Otherwise there is no difference or no much difference between big M method and simplex method. 
Now the same step we have to divide the key row by the key element that will give us the row in the new table at the same place. Say row 3. That will be the first row of the simplex table 2. But that we will discuss in the next video lecture. Thank you very much.